Hey guys, so hope everyone is doing well. I have this prophetic revelation that I've been talking with God, God about it since in October. I want to say like October 22nd was like the first time. Well, I'm not going to say that was the first time this prophetic revelation came to me. I think it, it's been in my spirit for quite some time. But on October 22nd is when I found myself like really talking to God about it because he was giving me some prophetic insight. So this prophetic revelation um, is about the difference between praise and worship. You know, that's something that we are required to do. We are required to praise God. We are required to worship God. But the two are not the same. They have different posture and they also have different... Um, benefits they have different outcomes um so understanding the difference between praise and worship can bring a new depth to the way we honor the lord the two are not the same right praise is often reserved for the activities of god we praise god based on what he has done praise is a form of thanksgiving you know, praise is a way is one way how we show thanksgiving. It 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 there's a it is not thanksgiving within itself, but it's one way how we show thanksgiving. While worship is an attitude of the heart. Worship is an attitude of the heart, while praise is an attitude of the soul or an attitude of the mind or an attitude of the memory. I'm going to say that again. Worship is an attitude of the heart. So when you're worshiping God, your heart is required in worship. When you're praising, your heart is not necessarily required, but your mind and your memory and your soul is required. Um, praise is easy. Worship is not. You know, because praise is easy because it doesn't have to come from the heart. You don't have to die to yourself to praise a to praise God or to praise a thing. But you have to die to yourself to worship. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but let me just break down the two individually, right? So what is praise, right? Praise is a joyful, boisterous sound of recounting all the good things that God has done. It is closely intertwined with thanksgiving. Um, and that's why we see in the scripture in Psalms 100, it say, enter into his gates, with thanksgiving and into his course with praise. So praise and thanksgiving is, is closely intertwined, right? So as we're giving, you know, um, praise is a way of giving God appreciation for the mighty works he has done. Um, praise is universal. Praise is universal and can be applied to other relationships as well. So praise is not just reserved for God alone or should be reserved for God alone. Hear what I'm saying? Praise is universal. Uni <laughs> praise is universal, right? We can praise our family. We can praise our friend. We can praise our boss. We can praise um, our dog. That, that, that's often how you teach a dog a new trick, by you praising them. Even a baby, when a baby um, is learning how to walk or learning how to do a new thing, we give them um, moments of praise because praise give approval it gives assurance so praise is using is universal it's not just reserved for God alone you know so we praise can be applied to different kinds of relationship family friend boss um colleagues praise does not require anything of us it doesn't require anything intimately from us or of us. It is merely a truthful acknowledgement of a righteous act of another. So when you're praising someone, it does it is is a truthful acknowledgement or an earned acknowledgement. You know, praise is something that's usually earned. Something is done for for that person or that thing to earn that praise so it's an acknowledgement it's a truthful acknowledgement of the righteous act or the good deed or the kindness or the nice behavior of another person or, or, or another thing right since god has done many wonderful deeds of course he's worthy of praise and you know psalms 18 verse 3 um said that let me just go over the psalms 18 verse 3 real quick um 
<clears throat> Psalms 18 verse 3 said, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. So you notice, notice that after he said who is worthy to be praised, so shall I. So, there, so there's something contingent up on praise. So you know he's praising God because God has saved him from his enemy. Or he's praising God, praising God because he knows that God is about to save him from his enemy. So the praise often has to do with the activity and the action of another person or a thing. Not necessarily who they are, but what they have done, right? So um, you could praise your parents, you can praise your friend, you can praise your dog. Like I said earlier, I know I have a dog and how I was able to teach him a lot of new tricks was that I praised him with a treat and stuff like that when he did well, when he succeeded with, a, with, with, succeeded with, a, with his new trick. So praise is universal. Praise doesn't take anything intimately from us. Praise is intertwined with thanksgiving. Praise is simply the truthful acknowledgement of a kind deed or a kind action of another. Let's look at worship. What is worship, right? Worship. Worship, however, is diff it, it, worship, however comes from a different place within our spirit. Within our spirit, right? Worship should be reserved for God alone. And we saw that in, in Luke 4, verse 8. Let me go to Luke 4, verse 8 real quick. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So we see that, you know, while praise is universal, universal, right? Worship should be, you, you, you could praise more than one thing and more than one person at the same time, but you can't worship two things at the same time. So, you know, worship, it requires you to, to become sacrificial. Worship is, is reserved for God alone. Wor I just said it, I just said it, and here's it, that I read it right here. Worship is sacrificial. Worship is the art of losing self in adoration to another or in adoration of another just as praise is intertwined with thanksgiving worship is also intertwined with surrender so praise is intertwined with thanksgiving worship is intertwined with surrender you can praise somebody or praise a thing without dying to yourself without being sacrificial without surrendering but when it comes to worship the reason why worship is more is is harder to do than praise is because it requires you to surrender to let go of yourself to let go of pride it, you know praise i mean worship requires humility um, praise can be a part of worship, but worship goes beyond praise. Praise can be a part of worship, but worship goes beyond praise. Worship gets you, you know, worship gets to the heart of who you are. You know, so you can praise and still don't get to the heart of who you are. But if you're going to worship and really do it from a place of truth and spirit, it, it, it's going to get you, there's some things that you're going to have to deal with to, to, to truly worship. Worship gets to the heart of who you are. To truly worship God, we must let go of our self-worship or we must let go of the worship of ourselves. So to truly worship God, we must let go of our self worship surrender sacrificial dying to self we must be willing to humble ourselves before god surrender every part of our life to his control and adore him for who he is not just what he has done so when it comes to the aspect of worshiping god you're not really it's not about what he has done but it's who he is so even if he hasn't done anything good in the last week or last two weeks in your eyes he's still word he's still deserving of your worship you you still ought to worship him um um because most importantly worship is a lifestyle it is not a, it's not just a, a occasional activity it's not something that you do when something has gone right or when something has made you happy worship is a lifestyle you, you you you're supposed to worship him every day in the good times in the bad time in the mount on the mountaintop in the valley season worship is a lifestyle it is not 
an occasional activity or it's not a garment that you put on and take off. That's why you hear in the scripture it says that you know you put on the garment of praise. That means that praise is something that you can take off and you can put on. But worship is not the same. Worship is not a garment. Worship is a lifestyle. Word, praise is occasional. That's why you hear the Bible say you put on the garment of praise. So you could put on praise and you could take it off. But as for worship, that needs to be something that needs to be you. And you can't put on you and take off you. You have to become worship. Worship has to be a lifestyle. You know, um, Jesus even said that, you know, those who are seeking the Father must worship him in spirit and in truth. And we find that in John 4, verse 23. Um... Let me just give you like three facts about praise and it might sound similar to what I just said earlier, but I just want to bullet point these out. You know, praise. Praise is usually presented as a joyful, loud, boisterous noise. You know, God invites all kind of praise. He even said in Luke 19 and 40 that, you know, the stones will cry out that he even said you know if people don't praise him the stones will cry out so even he required he even required praise from creation itself a stone will praise him um second bullet point is a person can go through a person can do all the outward motion and all the outward activity and still not be worshiping him and you know where i found that to be true in in psalms 51 right verse 16 to 17 it said you do not delight in sacrifice sacrifice or i would bring it you do not take pleasure in burnt offering so those are the outward motion the outward activity my sacrifice oh god is a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart that's worship so you know the the delight the, the burn the, the the delight in sacrifice and the the burnt offering that is the ex that's that's praise that's external but when you can give, when your sacrifice comes from a broken heart and a, a broken and contrite heart or a broken heart and a contrite spirit, you know, that's worship. That's worship. So when it says, um, when, the, when the bullet point that I just read, right, said, says um, a person can go through the outward motion and, and not be worshiping. So they can do the outward activity of praise and still not be worshiping. Um, my final bullet point about praise is it must be joyful. Praise must be joyful. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Um, know he that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Um, so you, praise is joyful. Um, here are some facts about worship, right? And I have more facts about worship than I do about praise because I'm a worshiper. So the thing with me is that it's not that I don't like praise song, but I'm not really one of those people that that enjoy the upbeat gospel songs, like the one that makes you jump and clap. I'm not a Ty Tribbett kind of guy. <coughs> um, and nothing is wrong with Ty Tribbett and the songs that he sing and Ezekiah Walker, those, those upbeat stuff. I'm, I'm more of a hymn kind of guy. Like I like the hymns and the worship song those things that take me inwardly that really makes me focus so a lot of times when i'm in church and they're doing the jumping and the, the clapping and all that stuff I, most of the times i'm sitting through those now that i'm not i'm there in spirit but you won't get me doing all that jumping and clapping i'm more of the worshiper get on my knees lay on my stomach cry crying that, that I'm, I'm a worshiper i don't have time for that jumping and clapping if i want to do that i will go to the gym and i'm not saying that anything is wrong with that you have some people they, they just love to stomp and jump but that's just not me because especially when i want to hear from god and i want to be caught up in a vision or i want to be caught up in the realms of the spirit praise don't do it for me it, it, worship does that i need something that deals with my heart so I can be caught up, so I can ascend. Praise don't make me ascend. Worship makes me ascend. But for some people, it's different. Maybe because I'm prophetic, I need that worship. You know, I need, you know, um, that worship. So here's some facts about worship. You know, um, when the Bible mentioned worship, the, even the tone change. You know, when it talks about praise, it say make a joyful noise and stuff like that. But when it um when it never um but when it talks about worship 
it, it, the tone changed. So you hear things like, worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. And that's Psalms 96 verse 9. Worship the Lord in the beauty of the holiness. Um, or you hear something like, come let us worship and bow down. That's Psalms 95 verse 6. So not, Psalms 96 verse 9 say, you know, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So there's a, there's a change of tone. Like it sounds more quiet. It sounds more intimate, right? And then in Psalms 95 verse 6, it said, come let us worship and bow down. You know, so you, you, when, you, when you hear about worship, the physical action of worship often requires bowing down, kneeling, lifting your hands, or um, prostrating on the uh, prostrating on the ground, laying on your stomach. So you know anything that creates a attitude, a necessary attitude of humility. That that's what worship embodies. Worship embodies the action that brings forth humility. The actions of humility. Oftentimes, worship is coupled with bowing, you know, kneeling down, showing humility. I just said that. Um, let me see. It is true worship that invites the Holy Spirit to speak to us, to convict us, to comfort us. It must be done in spirit and truth. And that was kind of going back to what I just said. Um, that, you know, for me, when I want to hear from God, when I want to feel comforted by God, when I want to be corrected by Him, you know, I don't deal with the, the praise because all that loud clapping and stuff could really just box out what God is saying. When I want to really hear from him and feel his presence, I go to a place of worship. I go to the hymns. Um, you know, through worship, we realign our priorities with God's and acknowledge him once more as the rightful Lord of our life. So, you know, um, worship is reflecting, you know, or reflective. Worship calls you to reflect. It calls you to, it calls you to do a wellness check on your heart. Um, it is impossible to worship God and, and something else at the same time. Like you could only worship one thing at a time. Like uh, you cannot, you could praise multiple things at the same time. But when it comes to worship, worship is truly, it's truly reserved for one thing at a time. And the only thing we should be worshiping is God. Lastly, you know, God sees the heart and he, and he desires and deserve to have a sincere heartfelt worship um there's there's something that i want to share there's a i know this is a prophetic revelation to teach us the difference between worship and and praise right but there was this prophetic word that i got back in october 22 and i'm, I'm gonna add it here because i feel like there's revelation here as well that you could learn from this prophetic word so in this prophetic word, God gave me two letters, a letter to the body of Christ and a letter to worship leaders, our, our worship team. So dear body of Christ, God is tired of his people hiding their broken heart and their brokenness between, um, God is tired of his people hiding their broken heart and their brokenness beneath a coached praise. Yes, I said it, a coached praise. You know, when the co when you're being told to jump, when you're being told to clap, um, etc., and you do it because you're being coached to do it. So you know when you're in church and the worship team is saying you jump, clap, and you're doing it because you're being told to do it, but you're really not doing it in spirit and in truth. And then when church is done, by the time you go in the parking lot, you go in your car, that depression hits you all over again because you were just coached through per you were you were just coached in praise. Um, as opposed to entering praise by yourself or entering worship by yourself, you were coached into it. So one of the things that I hear God say to the body of Christ, stop giving the worship team extra work by having them coaching us into worship. We must learn to tap in the atmosphere being created. We must learn to host the presence of God individually for ourselves and not rely on the coach of others to get into the presence of God. Some of us are being carried into worship on a stretcher by the worship team. It is not their job to forcefully carry us into worship and their worship team and worship leader. You do not have to exhaust yourself 
by coaching the church into praise and worship. You simply have to shift the atmosphere. Your job as a worship leader or a worship team is to shift the atmosphere on a spiritual level and let the spirit do the work. However, um, only an atmosphere can shift an atmosphere. You know, so therefore the role of the worship team is to carry a heavenly atmosphere which can only be attained through fasting and intimacy with God. Um, so, you know, a, a prayer, songs and prayer alone do not shift the atmosphere. You know, how you shift an atmosphere it requires you to carry your own atmosphere. You know, for example, an AC shift the atmosphere. How does an AC shift the atmosphere because the AC was built to carry its own atmosphere. If you turn the AC on in a hot room, that hot the, the atmosphere of the hot room is going to shift from hot to a cold air. Why? Because the AC was built to carry a cooling atmosphere. So we as so not we because I'm not a worship leader or a worship team, but worship leader and worship team, your 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 job is supposed to carry an atmosphere so you can then shift the room and then allow the people of God to tap into the atmosphere that you ship in. When a worship team becomes so focused on coaching the praise of people, then it is too then it's easy for so when the worship team become focused on coaching the people into praise, then it's easy for for them to step out of leading the church from a place of um, spirit and leading them from their, their, their own perspective. So what I'm what the Lord was saying right here is just that when a worship team gets so caught up on coaching people into worship, then it's so easy for them to coach them from their own perspective and not from the perspective of the spirit because they're looking at them and they said, oh, they're not clapping enough. They're not jumping enough. Let me sing a hype song to get them to jump. When a lot of times, the Holy Spirit wants to do heart, a heart surgery on the people. And if, if we're always in this place of being coached to jump and to clap, then we're not creating an atmosphere for these people to reflect internally and carry themselves into worship and carry themselves into praise. So God, the, the, one, the, the one of the reasons why I love worship more than how I love praise is because worship allowed the Holy Spirit to do a surgery on your heart. You know, a lot of times when we're praising and we're clapping, it's so easy for us because remember praise requires nothing from us it doesn't require the heart it just requires memory the mind and the soul so a lot of times we're jumping and we're clapping and we're stomping and we're praising it is um it is easy for us to overlook to overlook um the things that really need to be presented on the surgery table. So I pray that this revelation of the difference between praise and worship bless you so you can now approach the two of them differently. Because there's a time to worship and there's a time to, well, I'm not gonna say there's a time, I'm not gonna say there's a time to um, worship because worship is a lifestyle. So we're always supposed to be worshiping. So make sure that you're not, you know, praising when you need to be worshiping. Make sure that you're not put, for, you know, praise, and I don't have nothing against praise, but I've seen people use praise as a facade. There are times when I'm in church and I'm deep in the spirit and people are praising and I'm, and God is allowing me, God is allowing me to see this where he said, look at that person. They're jumping, they're clapping, but look at their heart. Their heart is so broken right now. They're struggling with depression. They're struggling with suicide. As soon as they go in the car, they're going to probably light a cigarette. And, and, and I used to get so sad for them because I'm just like, yo, like they doing all this jumping and clapping. And anyone looking at them from the normal eyes will think that they're okay. But as soon as they go home, they're sad and they're broken. But when you allow worship to happen, that's why I feel like, you know, one of the things that God is doing, in, he's about to do in the body of Christ. And he's been trying to do it for a while now. But there's a lot of worship team and worship leader that, that's not allowing this, this, this wave to come in. But what I see the Holy Spirit been trying to do in church, he's trying to usher in um, more worship, more hymns, more worship than praise, so he can do heart surgery on the people. But I, be, I do believe that the church is so caught up in performance that they rather to sing a a a high a a high 
a hype song or a high beat song to get people jumping and clapping so it could look good on the camera for, for the, the online viewers to see. But it's also a beautiful sight to see when people are on their knees and crying and laying out on their stomach. There's power in worship. You know, I'm not saying don't praise, but worship does something to the heart that praise cannot do. God bless you, God keep you, and God allow his face to shine upon you. And I pray that this, you know, revelation encourage you to worship more and to praise differently.